The 1963 Pontiac Grand Prix is pretty much inarguably one of the most beautiful Pontiacs ever produced. It'd be hard to find a Pontiac or automotive enthusiast who didn't agree that the 63 Grand Prix stood out in a long series of beautiful Pontiacs. The 1963 model year was not the first model year for the Grand Prix. That was, in fact, 1962. And when it was introduced, the 62 Grand Prix was a little more than a dressed-up Catalina body-sized vehicle. In other words, it was a short wheelbase Pontiac, the 120-inch wheelbase, compared to the 123-inch wheelbase that the Bonneville was riding atop of. But it did have some unique features, including grill and the so-called invisible taillights out back, and some interior trim bits. But for 1962, the Grand Prix really wasn't all that special when you compare it with what came out in 1963. 1963 was the first year in which the Grand Prix also got the stacked headlight theme, transitioning from the horizontal quad headlights, and it also gave Pontiac a new look that would carry it into the mid-1960s. And while it's certainly true that the Grand Prix shared a number of pieces of exterior sheet metal with other Pontiacs, and the stack headlight theme was also shared, it did get a distinctive roof line, which was different from the rest of the lineup, and this roof line eschewed the faux carriage bow at the back of the roof that the other Pontiacs had. Just had a very beautiful, sharp, crease-like form at the back. And the Grand Prix got its own unique rear window that was concave in form, as opposed to just being flat on the other Pontiacs. It did get a different grill treatment up front, as well as hidden taillight treatment in the rear giving it a bit of a stealth look when you saw the car coming up from behind it. And in this photo, you can see more of that distinct rear end treatment with the Grand Prix badge at the lower right portion of the deck lid. And again, that stealth taillight treatment. I think actually the Grand Prix did this taillight treatment the best for the 1965 model year Outback, but it certainly is very handsome in the 1963 model year and also have kind of these mini fins that were a Pontiac characteristic of the early 1960s. As years would go on, those would kind of get toned down, and the overall body shape would become a bit sleeker. But the 63 Grand Prix is certainly beautiful from this rear angle as well as the front angle. I did just mention the unique Grand Prix trunk badge out back, but the Grand Prix also did have some unique detailing throughout the vehicle's exterior one element of which is this modified arrowhead that sat in between the twin port grill. You can see here the GP logo on the arrowhead as opposed to the cross, something that only appeared on the Grand Prix, obviously with GP being there. One other Pontiac hallmark on this particular vehicle that was not unique to the Grand Prix but was used across the Pontiac lineup as an option, the so-called aluminum wheels, or colloquially known as the 8-lug wheel option. You can see it here. This is effectively an 11-inch finned aluminum brake drum with an attached 14 by 6 steel rim. And it's a beautiful piece of not only art from a wheel perspective, but also quite functional that helped dissipate heat from braking. It was offered from the 1960 to 68 model years on Pontiacs, after which it was sunset really because by that point, disc brakes had become in vogue and available on a number of Pontiacs. So kind of outmoded it, although the styling of these eight lug wheels is pretty gosh darn awesome. Turning now to the inside of the vehicle, the Grand Prix features on the inside one of the most beautiful interiors in mid-century modern-esque form of the early to mid-1960s. And this 63 Grand Prix interior would really set the tone for Pontiac and Grand Prix interiors for a number of years to come in quite a few different ways. By comparison, the 62 Grand Prix interior just looks so plain. But in 1963, one great feature is that these dashes use real walnut wood trim. It is not fake wood on there. And it just sets the dash off quite handsomely. The dash also gets complemented by this wheel with lucite portions that take and reflect the sunlight in just a wonderful way when it's a sunny day. That would also become a Pontiac Hallmark feature, as would those three gauge pods over to the right of the speedometer. They would later start rotating toward the driver as opposed to jutting out straight as they do here. 
And you can see on the left, there's the Pontiac RPM gauge. Let's take a look at that in a little bit more detail. Here's a close-up of that RPM gauge. You note that the owner of this vehicle has set the red line at around 5,000 RPM, which is very appropriate for Pontiac V8s. They really weren't revvers beyond that point, and you'd start getting valve float. So there's no sense in revving them beyond about 5,000, 5,200 RPMs. But these Pontiac V8s just have tremendous torque. We'll talk a little bit more about the numerous engine options that were available in this Grand Prix. But I always thought that this RPM gauge here off to the side of the speedometer was quite handsome. And it's not integrated into the overall instrument panel, but it's functional. And it certainly looks cool being attached to the A-pillar here. You also can see a little bit more of a close-up of the wood trim. The knob on the left is for the headlights and the interior lights if you rotate it. The one inboard of that closer to the wheel is for the windshield wipers. And there's a little button in the middle to push if you got the optional windshield wiper washer, which this car does have. And here's a close-up of the right side of the instrument cluster. You can see at the bottom there, there's the heater control. Pontiac had this interesting style to its heater controls throughout not just 1963, but through the mid-1960s. And it almost looks like a second radio, but it's not. The heater control is the set of controls on the left. The radio is on the right over there. This is an AM FM radio as well. But the heater control, you would basically turn the left knob to rotate the blower speed, and it would change between effectively a low and a high setting. And then you turn the right knob for the temperature. This car is not an air conditioning equipped car. If you had an air conditioning equipped car, that temperature bar would turn blue if you activated the cold side, and it would turn red if you activated the hot side. And it would also vary the fan speed. Uh, as you turn the temperature up or down. It's so a little bit different. You notice there's that blower control isn't just a low, medium, high fan speed. You select a position, and then the blower is also proportional to the setting that you have for the temperature. It's a little bit different approach than what other divisions from GM or other automakers use. Kind of a automatic climate control, but not really automatic on these. Uh, Pontiac did have an automatic climate control option that was introduced for the 1965 model year, one year after it was introduced in Cadillac in 1964. Cadillac had a one-year exclusive on the automatic climate control. Another beautiful interior detail on these Pontiacs is the Chief Pontiac bright light emblem you can see here, illuminated in red underneath the 60-mile-per-hour marker. That was something that was a throwback to earlier Pontiacs of the 1950s that had the Chief Pontiac illuminated hood ornament, which had long been gone by this point, but at least you got a reminder that you were driving a Pontiac. And this would continue on through the mid-1960s. It was gone as General Motors introduced the new full-size lineup in the 1971 model year to be replaced by a dot indicator. 1970 was the last year. The Chief Pontiac could be seen on the speedometers of Pontiacs. Out back, the trunk on these Pontiacs was quite large, often about 20 cubic feet. It depended a little bit on whether you had a Bonneville or a Catalina or a Grand Prix. Again, the Grand Prix being the short wheelbase Pontiac, so the trunk was a little bit smaller. But still, you can see very, very spacious for the time, not overly well trimmed. There is a cover for the spare tire and then a rubber mat and then some cardboard pieces that fill the sides, but pretty unadorned trunk. But that was typical for the time period. Trunks were not very well trimmed until you got into some of the upper-end vehicles about six or seven years later. And I think, to be honest, Ford often did the trunk trim better than both Chrysler and GM, even on the luxury vehicles. Now let's turn under hood and talk a little bit about what makes this specific 1963 Grand Prix so special in addition to just being a beautiful vehicle. And that is that it's a factory 421 high output equipped Grand Prix with a four-speed manual transmission behind it. The standard engine in these 1963 Grand Prix was a 303 horsepower 389 cubic inch Pontiac V8, which provided plenty of power for these vehicles. The Grand Prix was somewhat hefty, but would tip the scales at under 4,000 pounds with a curb weight of 3,915 pounds. So that 389 propelled this vehicle just fine. But there were a number of optional engines available in 1963. The first was a 318 horsepower tri-power 389 cubic inch V8. So you got a little bit more power and you got the Pontiac famous tri-power setup for the intake. 
And then there was a 353 horsepower, 421 cubic inch V8, and a 370 horsepower, 421 cubic inch high output V8. There also was a Super Duty 421 cubic inch V8, making a bit more horsepower between 390 and 410 horsepower. But this 370 horsepower high output 421 engine, especially backed with a four-speed manual transmission, is just extremely special and highly rare. 421 powered Pontiacs in any form, whether that was a four-barrel powered 421 or a three two-barrel or the high output, really were only stuck in about 10% of the full-size Pontiacs making this 421 high output V8 under the hood of this 63 Grand Prix very, very special. And as I said, this particular car has a four-speed manual transmission. Unfortunately, the transmission that a lot of 63 Grand Prix have is the Roto Hydromatic transmission. Different from the Hydromatic, different from the Turbo Hydromatic, sometimes called the Slim Jim Hydromatic, and it just was not a reliable transmission at all. So thankfully, this owner went for the four-speed manual, but that's something to watch out for on the short wheelbase Pontiacs, the Grand Prix and the Catalinas in this early 60s time frame, is that they were equipped with the Roto Hydromatic. General Motors' leadership forced Pontiac to take the Roto Hydromatic to try to reduce the piece cost from Oldsmobile. And unfortunately, Oldsmobile used that transmission across the lineup. It just is... I can't use any other word for it. It's terrible. The shift quality is terrible. The reliability is terrible. The first to second shift is very clunky because it's not only shifting, but it's also entering almost a lockup mode with the fluid coupling. So the RPMs drop down very considerably. They tried to advertise that as a four-speed automatic, but it's kind of a three-speed. In any event, one could debate (laughs) the Roto Hydromatic for a long time. Now, as I said, this is a 421 cubic inch motor under hood, and some people will say, well, this is a big block, and then other people will say for Pontiac, no, it's not a big block. Pontiac never had a big block. Well, another debatable point. It is true that all Pontiacs between 326 and 455 cubic inches were the same physical external size, so the only way that you can really identify them and what size it is is by, in many years, a two-letter or digit or sometimes three-letter digit block code that's on the passenger side cylinder head just below the valve cover. And I'll show you a picture of what it looks like on this particular engine. But you can decode that uh, and then figure out what engine you have. So for those who say there is no big block, there is a short deck Pontiac V8, and that is a 265 and 301 cubic inch V8s that came much later. They are not the same physical size. This is 326 to 455 cubic inch engines. But I always found that interesting that you could take a 326 engine out of a Tempest and dump a 1970 Pontiac 455 V8 in it, and it's the same physical size and about the same weight. So you don't really have to change much and you get a lot more power. I don't know if the Tempest frame uh, and the body could handle the torque, but that's another question entirely. Hope you enjoyed this spotlight on this particular 1963 Pontiac Grand Prix. If you did, let me know and be sure to like, comment, and subscribe and check out the video thumbnails at bottom left and right for some suggestions for you. Thanks again for watching.